medical access and other socio-economic areas that social policy is concerned with. But we get into another thing. We're getting into a heuristic, which is the man-made diseases. So what's starting to happen is there's a new trend affecting the death rates of people. And, and what we've got is a compression into old age. And there's a thing beyond that called the heuristic disease. This guy, Trillin, um, sees at the end of the health transition where disease is ge um, degenerative, you live longer and you get old and you degenerate, there's this heuristic disease which in humans um, makes, what's happening is the young people, like when they take the choice to drink alcohol, they're taking drugs, they're actually increasing their death rates through car accidents and catching HIV and doing these different things. And so this heuristic state of affairs develops um, and the state is reluctant to see it as responsible in your new neo-liberal um, environment. And so what's happening is you're getting this liberalisation and say young adults can look after themselves, but they are causing themselves their own demise. Now the state's challenge with older populations living longer due to the health transition, we're finding the younger population is adding to that burden as they are adopting hubristic lifestyles, driving their cars too fast, having accidents, and the example of this is the fact of some parents are not getting their children immunised to TB. They're hubristic, they're creating their own challenges within the population. Now these parents, for reasons whatever they have, their, their, their child is, um, is lowering the community's protection from TB and increasing the child's chances of catching it. And this is now becoming fatal as no drugs can actually respond to this, once you catch TB, you can't suppress it again. So if the new liberal approach, neoliberal approach, is adding to the hubristic lifestyle and the population, then, fa <clears throat> then the factor of antibiotic resistant diseases um, are developing in the world, um, then we're getting this wildest global context as a real challenge on our hands. Internal migration or international migration lets disease travel quickly and the spread of SARS is a good example with growing parts of the population will have to fend themselves off if they get sick and run the risk of infecting others. Like HIV infection where behaviour is responsible for transmission, TB is transmitted through the air from a cough or a spit from one person to another. Doctors are protected from TB with vaccinations but the world has let this plan of vaccination, every person has fallen off. That's that heuristic lifestyle. You're a liberal, you don't need to worry about it. You'll think for yourself. Who will die will depend on who you know and where you live and the money you have to spend. So Durkheim looked at suicide in one of his books and he looked at the social factors that increase the rate of suicide. And this ties in with the heuristic lifestyle that Truman talks about and the reason um, can be suggested the same as social isolation and um, disregard for divine laws or, or, or laws that protect people and this lawlessness that we're seeing in the new and you see with the young people drinking they're becoming lawless and it's creating this this really dangerous situation in society these are times for more state control and less neoliberal influence because when we get an outbreak of SARS we see the whole government coming in because it, that cripples your economy. And so we're getting to a time now where, so in conclusion, social policy will have to consider new genetic contributions in its science. Managing population decline will draw on new social policy ways of thinking. Now is the wake up call for sociologists to how to manage the herbistic activity that's going on out there. And sociology has come of age. Social policy needs to look global as well as local. I've drawn this graph here, and it's, and it's starting off with the individual looking after themselves. We've got to the state where we've got huge welfare state assistance, and we've also got individuals with huge incomes. But the thing is that the global population just can't keep increasing. So we're going to get a contraction of population, but we have to manage that somehow. Now genetics is a really interesting um, part of that because not only is it affecting the bacteria's resistance in an antibiotic situation, but as humans, 
there's going to be a culling out of people that have herbistic activity because the state's not going to be bothered with looking after them. But not only that, we're going to actually have whole nations that if they don't look after themselves and they become infectious to the world, we can't treat that disease. And so those are going to be isolated and it's not going to be a very nice situation where the countries are going to become quarantined and have to implode on themselves. So that was my point. Genetics is now brought sociology to coming of age. We can now analyse, like a science, with very physical hard facts, what is going to be happening in the future. And I hope this introduction to that is not the full gambit. There's a whole lot of other things. But I believe that it, it fulfills Durkheim's um, grasping for what are those things. We now have them, and I believe it's, it's in the genetic side of things. So our social policy is going to have to take into consideration these, these um, things. So thanks very much. Questions?